Coming up this week on the show, we see how our athletes are learning leadership skills, and we get a sneak peek at this year's virtual strawberry festival. It's Friday, March 26, and the buzz starts right now. Happy Friday, Fort Mill. I'm Sophie. And I'm Emma. Our athletes are working hard this week to bring home some Fort Mill wins. Let's toss it to Delaney with sports. Hey, Fort Mill, I'm Delaney, and you're watching the Buzz Sports. <laughs> Varsity Baseball battled the Rock Hill Bearcats on Tuesday and lost 3-5. And the boys will take on Rock Hill again tomorrow at home at 7.30. Varsity Boys Golf chipped off against Rock Hill on Tuesday and won 161-219. Varsity Boys Soccer faced off against Gaffney on Tuesday and won 1-0. And the boys will battle against NAFO tomorrow. Varsity Girls Soccer will take on NAFO tomorrow at home at 7. Varsity Softball will clash with Boiling Springs tomorrow. Varsity Boys Lacrosse challenged Boiling Springs on Monday and won 13 to 12. And the boys will take on the Falcons tonight at NAFO. And the boys will battle against Catawba Ridge on Saturday. Varsity Girls Lacrosse clashed with Boiling Springs on Tuesday and came out with a blowout 13 to 2 victory. And the girls will battle against NAFO tonight at home at 5:30. Varsity Boys Tennis challenged Gaffney on Tuesday and won 6 to 0. And the boys will take on NAFO tonight. Every Tuesday and Wednesday morning, assistant baseball coach Coach Morris leads the football and baseball teams in a leadership training. I talked to Coach Morris to find out more about the leadership program he's created here at Fort Mill. I'm Delaney reporting for the Buzz Sports. Yeah, we have started a leadership program here at Fort Mill High School. Uh, we started this three years ago with our baseball program. Uh, the leadership program is a biblically based program where we use uh, characters out of the Bible and we teach the leadership skills that each one of those characters exhibited and we use that to uh, put them into our athletic uh, teams uh, for practice. Here's, here's a key word there, it's called servant leadership. Listen, servant leadership. Okay, you just don't lead and stand out in front of people and say, I'm the leader, look at me. The main goal of our leadership program is to teach the leadership skills so each student athlete will be able to apply those to their athletic teams. Uh, if the leadership, uh, you know, one of the skills we're teaching uh, this week uh, is about holding teammates accountable. So by teaching uh, the leadership uh, principle, holding teammates accountable, using Mo Moses as the example in the scripture, we're able to take that back to our athletic teams and apply that on athletic teams. Well, right now we're looking to expand the program. Uh, every Tuesday morning at 7.30, we meet with the football program and use the leadership uh, uh, program with them. And on Wednesdays, we're doing the baseball program. Uh, our goal would be to start this program with other athletic teams, uh, and then later on to start this with some of the female student athletes as well. Thanks, Delaney. While a lot of upperclassmen are able to drive, there are a lot of dangers that come with the freedom of being behind the wheel. Driving under the influence is one of the most common causes for car accidents. This week, Stephen talks to a local organization that actively fights against drunk driving. We are a nonprofit that works to end drunk driving. We fight against drug driving. Uh, we support the victims of this violent crime. And we also um, provide prevention education on underage drinking. Um, I go to middle schools, I go to high schools, um, and we have a presentation that we do. It's called Power of Youth. In addition to spreading awareness, MAD also aids victims of drunk driving. We have victim um, specialists, and what they do is when a crash happens, you know, they get the call, they are meeting families at the hospital, they are unfortunately helping families to plan funerals. They are there through that entire process with those families, going to court with them, helping them to write victim impact statements. Um, referring them to, you know, the other services and things that they may need. All of these services Matt provides wouldn't be possible without people like you joining the fight against drunk driving. Volunteers provide a big service to us. We love volunteers. We appreciate volunteers. So we have volunteers that come in and help. So we uh, do things like, for instance, we do a walk. It's called Walk Like Mad. We do it every year. We do one in the Columbia area. We do one in the Greenville area. We do one in the Charleston area. And those are walks where we raise funds. So we use volunteers at those events. Um, we have volunteers that go in the court systems for us and track DUI cases. 
um, and just hearing these messages and just sharing it with your friends um, to make good decisions when it comes to alcohol and be alcohol free under 21. Though we still have a long way to go, helping Matt can bring us one step closer to making our roads safer. I'm Stephen, reporting for The Buzz. Thanks, Stephen. One of the best things about spring in Fort Mill is the annual Strawberry Festival. But due to COVID, things will look a bit different this year. Hayden gives us a look at this Fort Mill tradition under these circumstances. Like every year, the Strawberry Festival is getting ready to start this April. I got the chance to speak to Miss Hester and find out why it's such a special event. Well, I'm the events coordinator for the town of Fort Mill. Um, and even before I was in this position, um, I've always loved our town. I love the South Carolina Strawberry Festival. So to be able to plan events for our community, <laughs> this place that I love so much, it's just uh, just a great thing, and I, I love my job, and I love being able to do these things for my community. The Strawberry Festival will be happening this year, but there will be some changes due to COVID-19. Well, um, due to the pandemic, and in order to keep safety as our priority this year, we couldn't hold our normal festival in Water Elijah Park. So we've created a slate of events that include smaller in-person events, as well as a few virtual events. This means the festival will still happen, but it will consist of many smaller events which you could participate in. Well, for all of our events, all you have to do is go to scstrawberryfestival.com. Um, there's, um, you know, a, a page for every um, event, every um, contest that we're doing. Um, so just go on there, read all the details. It tells you, you know, deadlines, dates, times, everything. Make sure you sign up quickly because some events start as early as March. I hope to see everyone there. Reporting for The Buzz, I'm Hayden. Thanks, Hayden. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to check us out on social media for more. Until next time, I'm Sophie. And I'm Emma. Have, have a, a wonderful weekend, Fort Mill.